<laughs> Anyhow, spawning over in the top right hand side as our blue Zerg, it is sort of. That of course means that in the bottom left side of 2k atmosphere we're looking at the main base of the man who is considered to be the best protoss player in europe our german protoss representing big it is a showtime that was a really good pick up for big honestly like showtime he's a very very likable character i don't think anybody ever has anything bad to say about him and you know he plays damn good starcraft as well but yeah, Kevin, just to go back to you being uh, unpure, I will never forget Alice thinking that you tainted me and you just being like going off your trolley being like, what? He's just as corrupt as I am. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great stuff. Ben, I played a game the way that people bought it 11 years ago. I haven't modified one thing to StarCraft 2 and I definitely don't use a barcode or anything. I am as pure as they come. Yeah, I don't use a barcode actually. You do have a lot of accounts, though, Kevin, and oh, not that you know, I, many. I play this new one that's called like "See You at Wembley," and I'm like, "Oh, who's this <laughs> nice Protoss?" And then all of a sudden, there's a proxy Nexus in the bottom right-hand side of the map, and I'm like, "Oh, I know who this is." What can I say, man? I thought the Netherlands were good at football. I, uh, I will definitely <laughs> change that name this season. We all have one name change in season, so yeah, that was no success. <laughs> gutted, absolutely gutted. It's just the way it is. I'm very curious to see what uh, Sword of has in store for us in this best of three. Uh, like I said before, I know that he's no stranger of the late game. He's quite fond of just taking four or five bases and then getting a couple sports, running around with a lot of queens like so many other people do. These days, by the way, every single time I, I think of CVP, I think of Hellraiser and it's like, all they have to do is build kings and, <laughs> kings and queens every game. <laughs> and I just love that tweet so much. But we do see a lot of queens in uh, this matchup. We certainly do, and it, it feels like uh, we're getting more and more of them. But fortunately, we are getting like microbial shroud with them, which I actually think is really cool. Um, so yeah, a little bit of evolution coming along. Showtime does start off with a Stargate. Did go for the little cheeky pylon block just to delay this even more, which ah, every little bit helps, right? As long as you cancel it and don't lose it, you don't want to donate 100 minerals. First Adapt is on its way to the other side of the map. We know that this is not a big deal, but it's actually kind of important to do this move out. Because in case sort of was going for something really wild, like a Roach Lingolin or a Bailing Boss, you just need to double check these things. And, well, that is a couple of additional Zerglings. We already had four Lings out, six extra Lings on the way. What is uh, Showtime up? What is sort of up to? Because. 10 links that early? Okay, I guess just against the two dead depths, but that feels like a lot of links this early on. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a bit of a dent in your economy, and they're still going to get damage done. One misfire maybe on a Zergling there, but nice little spot meandering around these uh, minerals and what have you, and I gotta say, this is already, I think, a very good situation for Showtime. Yeah, I don't hate it, man. Like, yeah, sure, you lose your two adapts, but you can still use your target units to just go up to three bases without really being in any danger. That's ten links. Ten links could have obviously been five drones. Like, of course, need a couple of safety units, but ten links, lost mining time, three dro dead drones. Yeah, I don't think Showtime is too upset he's spaghetti with that threat. No, and I mean, here, maybe you can get the pro, but still, it's not going to well, It's going to cost him a few links, and Showtime just playing this very smartly, very safely. He knows he's still economic damage and that number of lings, yeah. I mean, he sees it as well. He's like, oh yeah, they didn't really do that much. They didn't really stop the adepts from dealing any damage whatsoever. Or I know they got killed, but three adept or three drones. That's kind of what you hope to get. It's like, you know, it's reasonable. Yeah, yeah, you know, not game ending damage by any means, but it's like, okay, this wasn't a bad uh, investment. It's not like Showtime really relies on these adapts a bit later because he's not going for a Twilight Council. Now, if you want to follow it up with a Resonating Glaive at that push, then you don't really want to lose your adapts early on. But that is clearly not Showtime's plan. Sort of is dropping a Roach Warn. How much scouting has Sort of done? Okay, he's got an Overlord actually in the main base. Not been able to see a whole lot with it, but I guess the fact that he didn't see six gateways is the scout in and by itself. Yeah, he actually saw like the oracles being made as well. So he knows there's at least one more oracle on the map, but we do see that Showtime actually has three, which I don't know how I feel about that one, Kevin. I mean, it's obviously a pretty a spicy number to have. You can He's been defensive with one of them at his third base. He's getting harassed and on the other side. 
Um, cool. I haven't seen it that often, though. Uh, the trap Oracle was a thing for a while, and then it fell a bit out of fashion. But never forget that one home story cup where Zest and uh, Stats were executing it at an incredibly high level. And even got a W over Serral, who's pretty much invincible at home story cup. So it had its moment when we were playing King's Golf. That's when we saw it over and over again. Trip Oracle is something you always have to respect. There's no sport crawler there. There is one queen in the main base that gets a couple of extra hits off. That could have gone worse for sort of. I think losing three drones there. But that amount of damage on the oracles is somewhat acceptable. Yeah, it was the one base that you didn't have a spore crawler, which you know that can definitely come into play a little bit. But yeah, I, I think so far, Sword of's getting to a part of the game which I think he enjoys. You know, he hasn't died to any cheeky adept all in or you know void ray all in uh, potentially. These adepts though, this is the kind of damage that you really don't want to let happen. And three drones again, maybe four. Oh, four drones to use. Yep, the transfuse on the drone. You don't see it very often, but if you have that many queens, you may as well. I don't hate it. Showtime is Robo Bay is about to finish up. He is looking for some more damage with the two oracles oh. in the natural one. This is really what separates uh, the men from the boys, I feel like. Look at the amount of extra kills that Showtime was just able to find when you kind of think the face of the oracle is over, right? Like at this point, you're just careful with them. Drop a revelation, drop a stasis trap. Not Showtime. Looking for more damage and finding more damage. Yeah, I, I also like the fact that he used the two oracles that didn't take hull damage. I have no idea where the other oracle is. I think it's being defensive on his side of the map. Now he's got those two oracles behind the main, and we know that there's so much dead airspace. He does get some fire shots off on the queen, which might be a mistake, but sort of actually dealing with it very well now. But the damage is definitely being done. Yep, Showtime is up economically, and that's obviously not a place that any Zerg really wants to be in in this matchup. It feels that sort of is gearing up for a massive Roach Ling Ravager attack. Right when I say that, he actually queues up a drone. But this hasn't gone that well over the last minute and a half. So you kind of feel that sort of needs to do something in return. Otherwise, things are going to spiral out of control for him because at this point, he's just taking damage. He's not really dealing any damage. So there you go. A lot of extra roaches on the way. There is an overseer being morphed too. That's very important because we know there is a dark shrine finishing up and making a roach queen ravager attack without an overseer would have been a disaster. I got to say, Kevin, I, I was just looking at Showtime's vision just then. He revelates the main, the natural, and sends a hallucination to both the third and the fourth. And he knows exactly what's coming. He threw down a lot uh -oh. of cannons, right? And yeah, we do see that it's going to be a big, big attack from Sword of because there's no drones at that fourth base. It's going to be so hard not to eat massive purification novas to the face, right? Like you're attacking with roaches into cannons, into disruptors, and then you've got these super slow queens as well. It feels like these novas should be cash money. Sort of does have a bigger army, but I think this time the supply does lie a little bit. Forgive me, Yon Merlo. The supply does not always say how it is. Maybe there is some potential. First nova is a good one though, blows up a Ravager. The Banelink's really not getting a whole lot done. And I feel that these supplies are about to even up real quick. Oh, I mean, this whoa, whoa, is whoa. so... It went very far forward with a few units now. I was just thinking it's so well handled by Showtime. The battery, that's a late battery. And now it's on the front line. I mean, Showtime, he's making more out of the situation than I thought he would have. But now the Novas are back. Nice shot so far by Showtime. Maybe yeah, it could have been used differently. But ah, he's got so much here, Kevin. I think Showtime's running out. Or rather, sort of running out of steam here. Yeah, the Queens are very low on HP, the Archons are still there, and obviously we can have a couple of Warpings. Now the Oracles are going to show up. Oracles with Pulsar Beam, all three of them will obliterate these Ravages, and this attack has officially failed. The only reason that got as close as it was is because Showtime moved Commandant, or he clicked on a unit by accident that was way too far away, so his units were not actually firing. They were running straight into the army of Sword of, and that is what made this fight a little bit closer than it should have been, but... Yeah, the numbers don't lie. Sort of has lost 8,200 resources. Showtime only 4.4k. On top of that, Showtime has a better economy and has a better army. Is there any other department you could be ahead in, Ben? I guess the upgrades, well, he's ahead in that one too in 10 seconds. Ah, uh, he's just looking fresh, isn't he? I like that disruptor count. Like, normally it's a bit scary when you're only at one or two, maybe, but now he's at five. And he just sees that it's more Zerg uh, coming. He can almost throw them out a little bit willy-nilly. And that's, that's Roach Ravager on equal supply with that kind of tech from the Protoss. As you say, Kevin, this is super damn rough for Solov. Yep, it feels like the last 23 Banelings. That is the absolute Hail Mary play here from a Swedish Zerg. 
But he's got so much running away to do from all these Novas. Showtime can fire these disruptive shots forward for days. Even warps in for the T's now. Where is he warping those in? Uh, oh, he just made sure? him into Archons, I guess. Okay, yeah. Yeah, this, this is not a fair fight. This is not a fair fight. Showtime's army is better. It's about to become bigger. And it just has way more micro potential too. Yeah, and I mean, he's being so careful about where he's positioning. I mean, sort of, he's getting a nice connection at the top. He does wrap around the bottom here as well, but ah, uh, these Novas. And Showtime's <laughs> been so careful about the, the recharge as well, like the battery overcharge. He hasn't used it yet, but he doesn't even need to. He's asserting his dominance. He just wants to make sure that people don't complain about the green battery. It's not always about the green battery, Ben. Sometimes it's about beautiful, strong Protoss units. And I would say Showtime is one of them. Our favorite takes the 1 0 lead here, and I gotta say, he did it convincingly, man. It just really felt that he was always ahead. I love that you pointed out the amount of vision he had. Revelation, revelation, hallucinated Phoenix. Showtime was so ready for that attack, it wasn't even fair. Yeah, I, you know, I, I always love looking at the small details, right? It's like he was checking. The tiny each details. Yes, yes. And he was the tiny details. I love it. Um, but yeah, he checked out absolutely every base and he saw one of them didn't have drones whatsoever. He's seeing the units pop out here, there and everywhere. Sees the unit mix as well. And he was more than prepared. Like he was on 77 ish probes. And you can be like, ah, has he overdone it? Not at all. I also love the Sim City that he had. Um, I really can't fold his play at all. Like the Oracle play as well. It's just beautiful yeah. um, all the way through. I think that was like an absolute, besides the little move command there, it was just a top tier game from Showtime. Yep, one little mistake, and that's really all we can harp on, because everything else was about as perfect as it perhaps could be. I even love the fact that he was so patient with these oracles in the end. Sometimes it's easy to panic a little bit when you see all those queens, ravages, lynx, banks, roaches show up. You're like, all right, I need all my firepower now. He waited until pretty much all the queens were dead, and that's when he sent in those three oracles. They actually do a lot of damage to light units. So lynx, banes, and ravages, they don't like it if oracles are hovering above them and unleashing all the DPS. Just well done. Really solid game by Showtime. I hope that uh, sort of does something wild in game two. I don't really know what I'm hoping for because I know that a lot of the early game Zerg cheeses are a bit lame, but from my part, he makes it look normal in the beginning and then goes for a Nidus or something. Like, I know it's hard against Stargates, mm. but I feel like the standard games, the kind of obvious attacks that you can't possibly hide well, I just don't think they're going to get it done. Not because they're not good, it's just because Showtime is at a higher level. Absolutely, Kev. Uh, nail on the head right there. Anyhow, spawning in the top right of Jagannatha. Currently 1-0 down. It is sort of. And that, of course, means that in the bottom left side, we're looking at the main base of the incredibly handsome and amazing German Protoss representing big. It is a Showtime. Actually, as far as... Uh, yeah, as far as esports players goes, you know those uh, those uh, those articles where it's like, oh yeah, you know, internet gamers they're out of shape and stuff. We could absolutely show them these two, where they're both built so damn well, muscular, working out very like consistently, and it's like, yeah, no, they're they're pretty good now and then, you know. More than good. Yeah, sort of has definitely been uh, taking care of himself really well, and that's obviously awesome to see. Uh, He's been healthy. I think he's been trying to find a perfect balance between the gaming and other things that he wants to focus on. We know that he's been streaming quite a bit too. Same can be said for Showtime, by the way. If you guys are hungry for Proto streams, Showtime has been spoiling a lot of you with pretty consistent streaming schedules. He's live every day, firing up a couple of hours. He's there, providing some commentary as well. Commentary and being nice. And it's been a joy. And losing to the occasional Protoss caster over on Jagannatha in solid 25 minute macro games. <laughs> I didn't want to bring it up, but yes, man, that was a banger. <laughs> I, I, I knew it was coming, you know? I, like, I loved it afterwards. He was checking it and he was like, this build doesn't make sense. Like, but then he's like, oh, damn, he beat me. But like, you know, I, I, I was late one night with my phone in my bed and I was like, what the hell? This game's really damn close. Who is this? And I saw like the little name pop up because he like highlighted one of the units. See you at Wembley. And I was like, oh my goodness, Kevin's going to be so happy with this one. I, I was, but in Showtime's defense, guys, for every game I win against Showtime, he wins around 73 against me. So <laughs> we, we, we got to keep it real here. But yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was a keeper. I'll, I'll, I'll say that much. No, I, I think uh, Showtime's always a lovely character. Like, uh, 
I, I can't say enough good things about him. Um, it's definitely going to be tricky for Show, or rather sort of here, uh, given that Showtime is, I, I think he's the strongest Protoss in the group, uh, strongest Protoss in Europe, most likely. Um, and he's got a lot more Protoss to go after this. It could be that this is a nice test though for sort of to see what he needs to improve on after this. Yep. Um, so maybe he's just going to stick with the very serious and real strategies. Maybe not going to go for any gimmicks. Um, and, and just see what he needs to prove upon, or what he can approve upon for the rest of the Protoss in the group. I do hope that Showtime finally has an amazing run, and obviously starts off by finishing top two in the group. This is a tough group, and I think he knows that if he makes one big slip up, it's gonna be hard, because beating Raynor, that's gonna be hard even for Showtime. So he can't really make any mistakes against Mana, Harstam, Gungfu, Christiana. It's just a tough group, man. But if you want to make it into the top four in the Dream Act Masters Europe, you want to qualify for those season finals, uh, you just need to have a good start here. And don't drop any maps that you don't need to drop. Look at the amount of damage, by the way, these two adapts are dealing. One adapt does get taken out. The other one escapes, but that's not just two drones, guys. That's two drones and a lot of lost mining time. A lot. Like the work account right now? I know the Protoss does get a little bit ahead normally at this period of time, but that was super far ahead. And now, like these Lings, they're kind of useless. They didn't really get the job done that they wanted to. That speed just finished just a few moments too late there. Uh, just excellent play by Showtime, and yet again. Yeah. Showtime is looking real good so far, just not making any errors. And sort of, by the looks of it, he's going to just try to play a macro game. He's, he's going to try to get his economy going, get the queen count up there, start spreading some creep, and maybe try indeed to drag this one out. Maybe we'll see some of that Infester Queen Ultra play that we've seen so much of lately with the very late Spire and the very late Corruptus, in case Showtime does go for a lot of air units. But since last game, Showtime didn't really play like the double Stargate Void Ray stuff. I don't think we'll necessarily see that. No, he's going for the triple oracle again, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. By the way, I was just thinking about Showtime against, like, the top three in Europe. I'll call the top three, like, Serral, Clem, uh, Raynor very often. I feel like him having Raynor in his group was maybe the most unfortunate draw that he could get of those three. Would you agree? Uh, I think all three of them would be hard. But yeah, I think he does slightly better against Clem than he does against Raynor. To be fair, before, I think it was Aces ROG, he didn't beat yeah. Serral for like four years or something. So I don't that know if true. Serral would have been a whole lot better for him. But yeah, I think any of those three are going to be tough for anyone. It's just hard for me to remember that like any Protoss that really has a favorable win rate against uh, Raynor at all, you know? Like I, right now, I, I think in my head, actually, when I think of who is the best in the world, I would go as far as saying Raynor is right now. I mean finals appearance in DreamHack EU and then winning the season finals. That's some pretty darn good consistency. And Kat Katowice champion, of course. Yep. And Raynor is, seems pretty fired up as well. We know that he took a little bit of time off after the season finals, but we'll talk more about Raynor's greatness when he actually makes his appearance on the A stream. That's going to happen in a couple of days. For now, sort of is just cranking out as many drones as one man can possibly crank out. Hasn't really made any slip-ups against the Oracle, so only lost those two initial drones. I know that we're just kind of talking over it. You assume that this is going to happen on this level, but it's so easy for a Zerg to make a mistake. This could very well be the first time he is going to lose some drones against his Oracle. But up to this point, I thought the Queen positioning was really good. Uh, absolutely. Uh, these Oracles dive in. Not too much hull damage there done. Um, we do see that Showtime is taking up to that Robo, getting the Twilight Council now. I, oh, I, I like how late he gets his Twilight, actually. I didn't even think about doing that. He almost lines it up like an armory for Terran for the upgrades, as opposed to just drilling out some charge early on or anything like that. Uh, really emphasizes getting out the potential of disruptors early. But has this Spire been scouted yet? It has not been scouted yet, but it does get scouted now. I love that there were a couple of roaches in the back of the natural. Uh, one of the roaches actually morphs into a Ravager, right when it gets scouted. But Showtime fires up a Phoenix immediately. He doesn't want to take any chances. I'm not quite sure where this game is going to go. And I sort of could obviously <laughs> just stick on Roaches, Ravages, and Banelings. But once a Protoss gets going on four bases and you get Archons, you get that gateway count really high up there, and the Twilight upgrades kick in, it's hard to believe that just Roaches and Ravages can get it done on even bases. Yeah, and I mean, that Spire, I, I got scouted, but the Spire doesn't really add much to your army, right? Like, that just adds to the harass potential here. And right now, yeah, he's up to 82 drones, which is a good number, but I feel Showtime's getting to that 
that place that he really wants to be. His army's just going to be just as big, but just better and high attack. Sean sort of fires up two Muras. And it's almost like those two Muras have a job of getting on top of these oracles and make sure that these oracles can just chill. And obviously they can take care of a war prism a little bit later too. Oracles getting in real deep. First Muna is out. But two oracles are super low in HP, but they are very fast. This is, yeah, I mean, definitely unusual use of uh, the Spire. <laughs> I like that. Just cheeky little revelation. Just to make sure you see where it's going. Um, but yeah, sort of is resorting to getting melee upgrades, getting carapace upgrades as well, getting rope speed, a hive of all things. Finally, one oracle does fall. Yeah, that's the first oracle in two games, I think, that went, that went down. Showtime is sending his phoenixes to the other side of the map. He's like, hey man, I've got phoenix against your Mudas. Uh, where are they then? Well, sort of didn't really make Mudas. He made two of them to get on top of these oracles, push them away, potentially kill them. That didn't quite work out. That's just kind of it. Now Showtime is like, well, if I've got some phoenixes, I may as well just use them. Uh, sort of is going up to Hive. He's trying to take the base in the top left side. This is a bit of everything for sort of, isn't it? I love the fact that he initially made two Corruptors as well to deal with the two Phoenix. And then it, he sees that it's actually four Phoenix now. He's like, all right, all right, I'll add on one more Corruptor, all right? You're not having this one. Um, so a little bit of a air battle going on between the two. But Showtime, like this game's going longer already because he hasn't had to thwart off some crazy all-in by sort of. And we do see that the Fleet Beacon's coming down along with the Great Aspire and the Ulshless Cavern. So we're going to the late game, team. Yep, and we're getting the uh, Apache Glens upgrade too for the Infestus, so they will spawn with some extra energy. We may actually just see that spell that you were talking about. You can just place it on the ground and put your queens in there and then try to make sure the carriers don't kill everything too quick. I, I like it, but I also feel that sometimes the Zerks make things a bit too complicated. This is not one of these games, though, where I think it sort of feels comfortable with that kind of an army. I'd like to see it. We've got a massive weapon in the main base, and that is something that sort of hasn't seen yet. These units are pretty far out of position. They're all in the center of the map. I don't know if these settlers want to go for the Ultralis Cavern or the Spawning Pool, just fighting the Lynx. That seems a bit silly to me, because you know there is always more where that came from. Oh, in the meantime, though, sort of was trying to get a Baneling run by done, and they do not really get the connections they were looking for at all. Ah, but the little Corruptor squad, Kevin, gets rid of the Warp Prism. No matter. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you don't need a whole lot of them, right? Take care of a unit that can't fight back. I gotta say, sort of is doing a good job with the crit at uh, this game. I don't think Showtime has done that much to deny it, but that's a lot of vision for our Swedish Zerg. It's starting to look more and more like we are going to get a proper late game as Showtime even fires up the Mothership. The air upgrades are on the way. I don't know what these screens are doing. They're a little bit lost, but happens to the best of us. Yeah, sort of is getting ready for that ultra late game Zork army where we get all the spellcasters, the Vipers, the Infestors, and then obviously Queens to help out them. And who better to really test your metal against, right? Like, I can't think of a Protoss that is uh, better equipped to deal with this kind of stuff in Europe. The Corruptors as well, gonna deal with these Phoenix. I feel like Showtime's probably okay with losing these, but still just trying to get something done with them wherever he can maybe get a drone or two a couple more overlords if he can yeah, it's been a pretty passive game and this is kind of the moment where sort of feels like he wants to make magic happen he's got plus two melee and there's a big zirkling roach attack on the right side it's kind of funny how there's not a single baling in the mix there all the balings were on the left I feel like it would have been nice for sort of to at least get some damage done on one of these two locations surrounds an archon gets the archon now goes for the battery but this army is going to run out of steam. But the Ultras in the base on the left side, they're going to come back for seconds. He doesn't want to come back. Oh, I mean, that Protoss army, it's its not massive, but it's very scary. Like, it's packed with so much power. The Immortals as well. Uh, definitely pack a punch against those Immortals. The upgrades are looking very good as well. Even getting ready for Flux Vane. So I can imagine that Showtime is looking to take a fight kind of soon and then remax in as quickly as possible with very, very quick units. And now the mothership is out. And the sports product count is still very low, so it's not like we've had a lot of extra sports go down for Sordo, where he wants to create this wall of sport rollers in the center. It's mostly just about units. It does allow Sordo to get all those upgrades going. It's very important he's on top of his defensive air upgrades, because if Protoss attacks you with plus two and your Corruptors have no armor whatsoever, they are going to melt. 
I gotta say, I think it's nice for Sword Off to get himself into a position like this. At this point, it just comes down to execution. I actually think that Sword Off's execution of these kinds of games is not bad at all. So let's see what he's made of against Mr. Mount. I was actually thinking a very similar thing, Kevin. Here, spawning over it, or <laughs> dealing damage over in the bottom right here, sort of, constantly, like, attacking on both sides. But, yeah, despite how this game started off, which I think it was all pretty okay for Showtime, sort of is not looking outclassed at this stage of the game, which is amazing for him, and it just shows that this is where he feels comfortable. He's actually kind of dictating the pace of the game at this point. Showtime is doing what he's known for, and that is just defending. That Nexus is taking a lot of damage, though. And one of the Ultras does get picked off, despite the fact that it does have plus two armor and kindness plating. But I like what sort of has been doing so far. It is important that eventually you get ready. Ooh, a couple of Bamings connecting with High Templars there. Not a single High Templar went down, that is more to two Archons. But I do think it's important that we don't get too carried away with Roaches, Bamings, Ultras, because Eventually, you are going to be forced to fight these carriers. Absolutely. I'm, I'm kind of wondering, like, what is Sword Off's next step? Because this phase of the game, it's obvious that Showtime kind of weathered the storm, right? So, And getting more and more of the same thing, I feel like Showtime's army is going to be so damn strong. And now, Sword Off is starting to get lots of spore cores. Okay, so that's what he's buying time for. But is it too little too late? Because Showtime is on the move. Hey, couldn't he already build a mothership? Yeah. Oh, it must have got yoinked at some point and died. Or, wait. Yeah, he died. Okay. No idea where it died. Didn't even know we had that many corruptors out on the map to kill it, but apparently we have already lost some other ship. Uh, Goblin has lost O2 against Skillis that happened over at the B stream. I was keeping a little eye on that as well. You know me, Ben, if there's a PvP happening somewhere on this planet, I gotta watch it. But it seems like the young Russian played very well. I can just imagine the vibrations through the world, you know, you're just hearing every PvP that's going on, feeling all the Protoss hearts dying, but also it was your boy, Little Gobbers, going down. So that's uh, sad for you, but uh, very nice start for Skillus. I mean, Skillus has been doing pretty damn well in these DreamHack events in the past, so it's good to see that he ain't slowing down. And then a little Baneling run by, this has some potential. These Banelings obviously have not just plus two, they even have plus three. I don't know why they settled for the pylon there. It would have been awesome to see them try to connect uh, with some of these probes. There weren't too many probes to begin with, but it would still be nice. Yeah, both players having money in the bank. There we have our six infestors. And are we going to see the shrouds this game? Man? I think we have to, right? Like those queen fields with spores and stuff. and Because microbial shroud not only works on units, but buildings as well, as far as I know. But so many spores going down. It's got to be said, even though the creep spread has been pushed back a little bit uh, now by uh, Showtime, Sword Off's done a good damn job of just absorbing his half of the map, which is kind of a hard thing to be able to do, but he did it kind of effortlessly. <laughs> Love that little fungal to slow down these zealots. Give Sword of a little bit of extra time. Zealots are just going to try to gun down this spire, and well, that's going to be somewhat close, but like these sports if it was five zealots man there is a good chance that actually would have gone down of course that's better than that Ooh, the infestors are a little bit ahead of the party in the center of the map so i do think that children needs to be very careful because if these kinds of fights happen on creep in range of spore crawlers they can actually go down south for the protoss real quick yeah like they both have to be very careful showtime's army it's actually in the speed zone here so it can move and retreat very very quickly Oh, those ultralists got melted, and the investors, they were very late to the fight here, Kevin. Oh, running in a little bit. Oh, this is not what you want. These units do not regain their energy quickly at all. It felt like sort of just lost a fight that wasn't even a fight. Yeah. Like the fight didn't <laughs> really start, just lost a lot of key units there. The investor one more gets picked off. The corrupt account at this point is at 19. The carry account is at 5. The void account is at 6. This is where sort of really wants to go for it. The Corruptors are going to dive on top of it. But these air units from the Protoss have plus 3. The Corruptors do have plus 2 armor. But the numbers for sort of are simply not there. The Brute Lords are just flying straight into the meat grinder. And this has honestly been a bit of a disaster for sort of. I kept a close eye on the units lost resource step. But all of that started. Sort of lost like 1,000 more. Now he lost 7,000 more. Yeah, the supply is very deceptive. We see 19 Corruptors in production. So sort of bank disappeared absolutely. Showtime still got a massive bank. Now we can just keep on making a good army. These Ultralists are going to get something done. Ah, but those Void Rays, they're going to make short work of those Ultras if they do so please with the prismatic alignment. 
Tottenham could also obviously walk in defensive Dark Templars because he does have a Dark Shrine and there was no Overseer there. We are going to battle one more time. The Corrupt Account is a little bit higher. It's a 25 and that's why Shotem decides to just get the hell out of there. Satisfied with the amount of damage that he's done and I can't fault him for it. <laughs> that poor Parasitic Bomb, it did go with the units but on top of the shield batteries wasn't doing anything at all and sort of... Yeah, it's got to be said, he absolutely came out way worse than that fight. And now he's battered and bruised. He can barely get close to remaxing at this point. In fact, what's the drone count? 64 to 65, but I think Showtime's more than happy with uh, losing a few probes in all of this. Yep, Showtime could obviously take another base on the right side. He can still take the bottom right. That should be an easy one. Zelos get a quick cancel on the hatchery in the top left side. This sort of is going to use all of his Corruptors to take care of that uh, War Prison. Now the next fight, at least the Corruptors will have plus three armor, and that actually does make them quite a bit better against all these carriers. What is this Void Raid drive-by that's happening on the right side? He's going to go for the hatchery. Showtime, I'm pretty sure that's illegal, man. What the hell? Holy crap, that killed that so fast. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, sort of didn't even have time to react there. Never mind... Uh do anything about it. Showtime, getting lots and lots of immortals. What's he at? In fact, no, he's just making two at a time. Got six carriers, 12 void rays, a mothership. He's got a damn hard army to deal with. And Showtime, or rather sort of anywhere he runs, it's just cannons, batteries, and Showtime just slowly taking another base. Yeah, this game is actually kind of going out like a candle here. Sword of's economy is worse than an actual one-base economy at this point. He's got a couple of bases up and running, but none of them are properly saturated. And even the ones that are, where he only has like two or three mineral patches left. So losing that base on the right side is just a disaster. A couple of links are going to run on top of the Templars on the right side while he's trying to make magic happen with the Ultras on the left. But he's running into a wall, a wall that's named Mr. Mauer Showtime. And this wall ain't crumbling. Absolutely isn't. You know, uh, the way that sort of was playing it, just then with the Baneling and the Ultra run buys, it kind of felt like he felt like he was playing with a superior economy, right? But he doesn't at all. Like, these kind of trades are not good for him whatsoever. And I think Showtime, just the fact that he spaced out his units like he has done, just makes it even harder to deal damage. But yeah, at this point in time, sort of any decision he makes... Oh! What? He killed his own Ultra. Yep, misclick. Try to. Why would you attack move on a Zella like that? Or. Right? I don't know. Don't know what happened there, but sort of actually killing one of his own Ultras, that's the last thing he needs. He's going to lose another base to these speedy Void Rays in the top left. I really think it's time to give these Void Rays a ticket, man. Too fast. <laughs> They're doing a good job, and every time he gets a hatchery kill. Oh, he, he, he recalled to the mothership. So he's that's back sick. in it going to take out the right base as well. I mean, that's a great <laughs> fungal to start things off, but at this point, Showtime, he's just picking sort of apart, slowly but surely. Yeah, I think sort of knows it. He obviously has no economy. While this fight is going to happen, there's a Zealot run by the top left that's going to kill a lot of drones, but this could very well be the final fight of the game. The Void Rays are avoiding the Vipers, so they can actually come in now. Prismatic Alignment has been activated. These Corruptors are melting, and even though the Mothership does fall, that's what it's supposed to do, Ben. 25 drones have gone down to those zealots that I mentioned in the beginning of the fight. Showtime is playing a marvelous series. Ah, uh, this is textbook CVP and how you want to do it. Like, he played defensive, he played his style. Sort of, he actually played a good game. But all it takes is for one moment to go out of control. And I really felt it was that fight that he talked about that wasn't even really meant to be a fight in the top left that really was the start yep. of everything going wrong. I mean, the, the upgrades weren't quite there yet for sort of. The Infestors were out of position. The Vipers died before they really got their spells off. That's... I'm totally with you, man. You and I were on the same page, my friend. It is the fight that ended the game that wasn't much of a fight to begin with. <laughs> no, I, like, sort of just got caught with his pants down. And up until that point, I felt he was putting up a really good fight. But now, you know, he's going to try and get some damage done. But, oh, what happened there? I don't even know what he clicked on, but that carrier did not die. The investors will die, and I think this is going to be it. Sort of has to know that there is no stopping this army. Shotem's got a monstrous economy behind all of this. I love that Shotem is building another mothership. I think he's doing this out of spite. He's like, what is guessing? I'll build one more. I need it. No, you don't, Showtime. No, you don't. Build some DTs, Zelots, Void Rays, whatever. Let's get in there. Let's A move, and let's get this one over with. Because this brother's army will not be stopped. Sort of as broke as a joke and nowhere near maxed out. 
Yeah, I mean, if this was a ladder game, he'd be out of there already. Uh, like, the Ultras, they stop the Zealots, but there's no stopping this army. It's got to be said about motherships, though. That uh, time warp and the way that it works is so damn good in these big fights. Wow, he's getting a bit ballsy. He's just going for the hive here. Uh, I mean, this wasn't the best trade, but I feel that it sort of needs, like, 20 more of these to even remotely be in this. I mean, the fact that we have 10 Zerglings on the way against this army while we're losing bases, I think it kind of tells the, the, the state of this game, you know? It's like, ah, uh, it's probably not going very well. Now, one Bailing ban. That's just sad. One Bailing? <laughs> I, we, sh we shouldn't be laughing. I had no idea that an Ultralisk could go up to rank Assassin. That is probably the least stealthy Assassin that I've ever seen. I didn't know that either. Sort of going for it one last time, but the Corrupt Account really isn't there anymore. The economy isn't there. Showtime gets his Dream Act Master's fall off to a 2-0 start here in his opening set.